from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for March 7th, 2016. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready to get started with trading for this week. In today's video, I'm going to do a general overview of each of the U.S. currency pairs in anticipation of this week's trading. And I'm going to highlight some of the key levels that we'll be looking for for entry opportunities over the next several days. Let's get started here on the USD CHF, US dollar versus the Swiss franc. We can see a couple of things happening here. The previous downtrend first, I want to point out the red trend here that you can see. I say red trend, a lot of red candles in a row. The last fall we see from up here into the 1.0200s all the way down into the 9600s. We've seen a little bit of a rise, came back up about halfway 50% of that level, a little bit higher than that. It's been waffling on both sides of this 100 period moving average for the past several days. Inside this black box, a period of ranging and congestion here for the U.S. franc. Uh, again, we're right uh, right above the 100 period moving average today, but it's been on both sides of it for the past several days. I think we need a significant rise or fall here on this pair to get away from that moving average. Another interesting level here to point out is the parity level, 1.0, sitting at the p top of the black box, the pink shaded area. That's held as resistance for the past several days. What we're going to need to see if it's going to go higher is a breakthrough, a good solid breakthrough of that parity level. Then we'll like, likely look for it back here to the mid to upper 1.0s, 1.0050 to 70 is the blue shaded area, possibly even up here into the 1.01s, the yellow shaded area where this red trend line comes down here from the top of the chart capping these last two resistance highs. So uh, significant upside could be seen if we can finally get a solid breakout above this black box, the range, and the parity level. Otherwise, any more negative movement for the U.S. dollar sends us back lower, possibly all the way back down to the bottom of the box. So what do we do with this today? Let's zoom it in again here on this currency pair, staying on the daily time frame. If you're a, a buyer, a, a, somebody looking to go long here on this pair, I don't think you want to do it right now. Obviously, it's running into significant resistance here underneath parity. The only two reasons to go long and buy this currency pair would be first off a dip down into support which your closest support is this green shaded area closer towards the 99.50 level or it needs to break above the parity level those are your only two real reasons to go long right now here for the u.s franc otherwise uh again we're at the top we're at resistance if you're looking to go short you're probably at your very best opportunity to do so at the current time frame take it down to the four hour uh time frame Zoom it out a little bit. Today's significant rise that we've seen out of this currency pair would give me a little bit of a pause for going short. Uh, I think you need significant evidence and clues to reversal here before you would decide to go short here on the U.S. franc. It doesn't mean it's not a place to do that. It just means if you're going to go short, I think you need some evidence of this. I think we need to see it start to give us clues to reversal before we would just go short. So we are at a zone where you might consider it as close as possible to the parity level or clearly also watching for the breakout here for the continuation of the upside. Look at the whipsaw we saw on Friday with non-farm payroll. We had uh, some pretty positive jobs news, but we had low wages. So uh, we saw both directions taking hold here. I think probably the most significant part about this is that the last recent movement was the rally higher, and then today we've seen the next push higher. So that gives me a little bit of an upside expectation for the U.S. franc today. Moving on over to the euro dollar, similar situation except we've run into resistance. Today we see it a little bit above the 100 period moving average. Last week we were a little bit below it. So uh, again, we're waffling on both sides of the moving average. Significant resistance support level here at the orange shaded area. You follow it back in time and look at the congestion you see at the top of this black box around that orange zone and the 109.30, 109.50 level. Today we're a little bit above it, but I think it's more of a hinge point than it is a support level for the day. Today. Zoom it in a little bit. So what I'm going to be doing here for the euro dollar, of course, clearly it's already found today and this week resistance into the blue zone. So if, as long as it's underneath that blue zone, we'll call it the 1.1 level. I'd be hard pressed to go long here until it either until it breaks out above that blue zone. Truthfully, it's, it would have to get above 1.1 or 1.0, uh, 1.030 or so before I would go long. Uh, Obviously, this orange shaded area holding as some support today. Anything underneath there and the 100 period moving average will likely begin another 
fall here for this currency pair. Let's go down to the four hour time frame. Again, very similar to the US franc. We saw some whipsawing back and forth on Friday's uh, non farm payroll and low wages. We saw the dip or the rally, and now we're coming back down. This orange shaded area, kind of a hinge point today. Again, Finding support here may see it back to the blue shaded area, but anything underneath there will likely look for the continuation lower here for the euro dollar this week. Moving on to the GBP USD. Significant rally over the past week here for the pound dollar, but we're running into a significant level of resistance. We have a couple of trend lines to speak about here. Let's zoom in a little bit. First off, the green shaded area holding as your resistance 1.42, 1.4250. That's the green zone. That is your resistance today. Obviously, we have a bearish trend line coming into play there as well. You can see that bearish trend line coming down from these last highs up here at the top. That's where we're running, we're running into that resistance there. Go back to the left-hand side. See the blue box over here? Supports into that green shaded area. Those also identifying as resistance. If we're going to go higher, guess what? It needs to break through there. If it can't, we finally find resistance there. I'm going to change the color of this little short trend line to a different color. Let's make it this uh, green color right here because I want it different. Uh, the green trend line representing yet last week's rise here for the pound dollar. Obviously, the pink shade area becomes an important level as far as uh, support here for the uh, GBP USD. Right now, that support. Anything underneath it, we look for it to go lower. So if you're a seller, obviously there's two places to sell it. Either it ch touches the green zone again into 4200 or breaks a below 4100. That's the pink shaded area. If you're a buyer, if you're considering buying this currency pair, buying the pink zone or a uh, breakout above the green zone becomes your opportunities. Let's go down to the four hour time frame. Uh, we zoom it in a little, zoom it out a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. Resistance of the green zone. Obviously, if you're going to go short, that becomes your opportunity to do it. You don't want to go short right now as it sits on top of the pink shaded area. If you're looking to go long, the pink zone becomes that opportunity that you're looking for. 41.40, 41.30, already holding a support. I think you need it to dip again before you would look to go uh, long. Uh, any closer it gets to that green zone may become an opportunity to go short here for the GBP USD. Take it on over to the US CAD. We've been studying this downtrend pattern that we've seen here for the US CAD over the past several weeks uh, in the trade room the, along the red trend line. The, the black boxes here has been just pressuring lower. Of course, last week we also bouncing over to oil, saw a breakout of oil above the resistance zone, the pink shaded area broke above there, moving all the way to the blue zone, the blue trend line, now running into a significant resistance again on oil. Back down to CAD, you can see that it's been falling. As oil's been rising, the CAD's been falling. So that's the, typically the way you expect that to go. Look back to the left-hand side of the chart, this red box. Significant support at the red box into the green shaded area. So I would definitely watch for that as you go through any opportunities here today for the U.S. CAD. Moving on or zooming it on in a little bit more. You can see the breakout under the blue zone. We're holding just underneath it right now. The blue zone will be our critical decision point this week. If it gets back above it, we look for retracement. If it stays underneath it, we look for the continuation lower. Let's go ahead and take it on down to the four hour time frame. Look at this, finding resistance just underneath that blue zone. For the sellers, if you're looking to go short here, this is the spot to consider it into the blue zone. It's kind of wide. We're looking 3360 to 3400, so just be cautious. It could go as high as 3400 before it finds resistance here for the U.S. CAD today. Moving on to the U.S. Yen. There's a little bit of a range happening here as well. Look at the black box on the chart. We found the double tap down here at 111, the yellow shaded area, the very bottom, one time two times and it's been rallying trying to go higher last week made significant profits on several buys three or four buys last week into the orange shaded area i think that's a spot to continue to watch right here in the midst of our range look at the support we've seen there in that orange zone 113.20 to 113.45 it becomes a fairly low risk high reward opportunity we're looking for it to challenge back to the yellow zone maybe a breakout above the yellow zone we look for a reversal of the downtrend obviously we know what the risk is the risk here and let's zoom it in a couple of times if you were to take a buy here at the orange zone, like we did last week, like I did a couple of times last week, uh, the buy there, uh, the risk is that it breaks out underneath and continues to go down again towards the green shaded area at the bottom of our long-term range that we were studying here. Uh, higher, of course, the yellow zone becomes your resistance. Take it down to the four-hour time frame. Zoom it out a little bit. Look at all that opportunity to find support there into the orange shaded area. We've already been there even once today. There's some Fibonacci there as well. Uh, we've already been there today. Any dips towards 13.45, 1.13.40, become opportunities to go long, target back up to the orange shaded area at the top of our range, uh, and that, or sorry, the yellow shaded area at the top of the range, 114. 
So mid 113s up to 114, a breakout underneath the orange shaded area. Of course, like I said, we see it take a turn back down here towards the green zone at the very bottom of the chart. So if you're a seller, don't sell it now. Wait for it to rally to the yellow zone or break under the orange zone. If you're a buyer, looking at this orange zone as a possibility for the day today on the USD JPY. Moving on to the AUD, this one has been just bullish over the past several week, uh, several days. Uh, been pressuring higher all week last week. We broke through resistance highs at the 73.75 level, these last two resistance highs in the green zone. We've made it up to the next significant resistance level into the 74.40, 74.55 level, the blue shaded area you see at the top of uh, the, the market movement here. So we're at resistance resistance you definitely don't want to buy into resistance you want to buy on any dips into support if you're looking to go short and reversal that becomes an opportunity for you now that you've seen the wide angle view let's zoom in, in a couple of times obviously the blue zone is your resistance again that is 7440 to 7455 or so uh, the green zone is your first support and again if I zoom it out one time maybe we could see those resistance yep you know, over here on the left hand side of the green zone resistance here resistance here so those resistance back here help us identify that zone as support 7375 7355 so your closest resistance closest support blue and green zone we're right smack in the middle of them right now I'd be very cautious on trading it until it either reaches the top or the bottom to find yourself a lower risk higher reward opportunity here for the Australian dollar today. Take it down to the four hour chart just to get a short term uh, viewpoint of this. We saw a little gap lower. Market's coming up to touch that gap. But uh, here at 73, four, or sorry, 7440, the bottom of the blue zone becomes your resistance for the day on the Australian dollar. Take it on down to the NZD USD. Uh, some interesting things happening here as well. Uh, long term trend has been down. The most short or immediate trend has been bullish, but look at this black trend line. The last low down here, this low here, we're coming up underneath it to uh, tap into that black trend line again as we have over the past several weeks. So uh, very interesting there. Zooming in a couple of times. We've been studying this blue box, the range that was bouncing in here for several days, a couple of weeks. Finally found support down here, pushed above it. Now we're challenging above it. But interesting enough is that it opened inside the pink zone, closed above it on Friday, opened above here on Sunday's candle, and now pressuring lower. If it gets back within and underneath that pink zone, this could be a false breakout and the potential for the reversal here for the... Uh, New Zealand dollar. So definitely watching that by the end of day. 73, six, or sorry, 67, 65. 67, 65 is the top of the uh, pink shaded area. 67, 40 is the bottom. If it gets underneath 67, 40, we possibly look for the return lower and the retracement of this run from last week. Uh, if it stays above the pink zone, we could be looking for some continuation higher. If you're looking for a sell, look for it to either rally the pink zone or, or sorry, rally the blue zone or break underneath the pink zone. If you're looking for a buy, you're possibly there right now, but I'd be very cautious about buying this currency pair until we get a real solid open and close above our box and range that we saw here. Or the next thing you're looking for is a breakout of the blue zone. Take it on down to the four hour time frame. Look at that. It's a significant dip here for the New Zealand dollar. If you're looking to buy it, again, this is a spot that you might consider buying it. You just know the risk. The risk is a breakdown here underneath the 6740 level. We likely look for the continuous lower back down here towards the orange shaded area down here becomes a potential target if it gets back under the pink zone today for the New Zealand dollar. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.